Welcome to the Virginia Beach Public Library Meet the Artist event and art exhibition. This month, our featured artist is Paul Francois. My name is Sandy Hopkins, Adult Services Librarian with the Virginia Beach Public Library. Robert Kennedy, the Volunteer Art Gallery Coordinator for the Central Library, will introduce the artist. Thanks, Sandy, and thanks to all our viewers. We are pleased to have with us Paul Francois, a mixed media acrylic painter whose style he describes as industrial surrealism. Paul grew up in New Jersey and attended the University of Georgia, where he earned his Bachelor of Science degree with high honors and then his Doctorate of Veterinary Medicine. He's a 36 year resident of Virginia Beach, where he built and owned his veterinary hospital. After retiring, Paul has followed his creative inclination, aided by the skills from his previous professional endeavors. Through many years of communicating with clients, he became very adept at drawing to get his point across. In 2017, he began to apply these skills to creating mixed media acrylic paintings. His art gives him a chance to concentrate and focus on details similar to his focus while performing surgery, although a lot less stressful. Paul mainly uses acrylics on canvas, often applied with very fine brushes to depict minute details, but he also uses pencil and pen. He begins with one concept on a canvas and then builds around it, usually having no idea what the final painting will look like until it is completed. Often, he will take one of his five by seven inch color photographs, print it on the canvas, and use it as a catalyst for a painting. Paul chose the term industrial surrealism because his art frequently has components from industry and mechanization, such as straight lines and curves. He uses various tools from straight edge to percussion symbols and many industrial and commercial forms and fittings or imaginary objects to represent a surrealistic version of real life. His paintings originate from personal experience and thoughts in order to see reality from a slightly different perspective. His hope is that viewers will take the time to see the minute aspects of both the overt and hidden details of his paintings and enjoy a view of our surroundings through his eyes imagination. Welcome, Paul. Thanks for joining us. I'd like to present PJF Industrial Surrealism. Sometimes an artist sees reality a bit different than most people, and this stands true for me. As an artist, I've dedicated much time to the arts and constantly seeking new and innovative ways to develop new skills. I hope you will explore this digital portfolio with me and discover those special pieces and how they were created, what they were inspired by, and learn more about their meaning. I paint for people to see reality from a slightly different view. I hope you will take the time to enjoy. As you can see, my website is www.francoisart.com. My first group of paintings I painted on canvas, and then I've glued those to fine birch panels. All sides are finished, and these are painted then with acrylic varnish for protection and prevent discoloration. The first painting in this group is called Fruit of Life. As any good artist knows, they start with shading, and then shapes, and then fruit. And here's my fruit of life. My next painting is called Birth of a Pyramid. And in this, it's a representation of the ending of the Cold War. The painting in the middle was taken off the Berlin Wall. And it's a painting of East German Chancellor Erich Honecker 
and Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. And it ended the hostilities with a ritualistic kiss. To the surprise of many, Honecker took it to extremes. My next painting is called Drone Clown of Clone Town. And in this painting, you see every building is the same as each other. They're all connected to a central entity, which is the drone clown, but each building is the clone town. Some of you may notice is that the name of this painting is embedded in the top clouds. My next painting is called Water of Life. And in this painting, the little river runs down to the stream. It's taken up by the roots in the plant, which is a pitcher plant. The little hummingbirds will take the nectar from that. One thing you might notice is that all clouds in this painting have a silver lining. This painting, Stairway to Heaven, I won actually most creative at the Artist Gallery Near and Far Exhibition in 2018. Again, we have industrial components such as, as the pipes, uh, the pyramids. And in this one, you'll notice that the pyramids on the right are either silver or gold. The pyramids on the left are red. The pyramids on the right that are silver and gold are allowed to go up the stairs to the stairway to heaven. The pyramids on the left are stopped from going up there by the pyramid in blue with the little shield, and they're forced to go up the other steps into the red cauldron, hmm. kind of like what's happening these days. My next painting is called Gentrification. This one best in show at the Artist Gallery Extravagance of Color Act exhibition. It was also invited to be in the 2020 summer exhibit at Rocky Mount, North Carolina Contemporary Art Museum. Chosen from 796 pieces and over 200 artists from around the world, this was placed in their uh, summer exhibition. Gentrification is a sign of the times that we live in, where we have buildings that are falling and in disrepair and owners don't want to replace them. And you see that's exhibited by the left side where the building is falling down. It's replaced by new buildings, which are exemplified by the pyramids. My next painting is called A Higher Power. And in this one, I see this as the universe controlled by the brain, which is the higher power. And again, in this one, we see pyramid-shaped uh, entities on the right. They get lighter as they get into the, into the higher power. And on the left, they get darker. What that means you can take for what it is. This next painting is called Inner Beauty. Inner Beauty was painted around that central flower. The flower is the flower of one of my pitcher plants. And I started with the flower, then I painted the pyramid, and then I said, well, I need to paint something else. So I painted the women around it. And then I put some industrial components in, and then I painted the face, and then I finished that painting. This was one of the first time I used crackling paste, and that worked out pretty good. My next painting called Exit Zero, and Exit Zero was taken from a photograph of Exit Zero, which is if you travel down the Garden State Parkway in New Jersey and get to the end, you wind up at Exit Zero. And never anywhere in my life have I ever seen another Exit Zero. Now, here we see who's the brains of this outfit. And I don't know, but I'm sitting in the chair and there's my outfit. Now, 
Heart of the City, which is the next painting coming up, is one of my favorites. In this painting, if you notice, the red arterial blood is pumped through the city and the blue venous blood comes back into the heart and again, pumped out. The heart of the city, what is that? Is it a brain? Is it a politician? Don't know, but there always is a heart of the city. Periscope. Periscope, if you notice the central painting, the central picture, that picture was taken when I was in my boat out in Back Bay. A tree had fallen down, and from the back, the root stuck up, and it looked like, like that creature. I took that picture, and for years, I kept it, and finally decided that I would uh, put it in a painting. The painting that you see in front of you is of a submarine with a periscope, and you're looking out toward that little creature or beast. This is Mantis. Now, I have some flowers and some um, plants on my banister in my backyard. And at the beginning of summer, one summer, little mantis was out there and he started out about a half inch. And through the summer, he got bigger and bigger and he stayed out there. And every day I walk out there and there he would be poking his head around, looking at me, eating bugs. By the time the end of the summer came, he was about three and a half inches. He's a good little buddy. So I figured I'd paint a little painting of him. Now pipes, as you see, how that painting developed. In pipes, one of the themes is it maybe of imprisonment or being behind or being encaged. And you'll see that later in some of my other paintings, that theme go through. Now, this next group of paintings are strictly on canvas. They're not initiated by anything but the imagination. There's no prints or pictures. Now there's no limit to what comes across on the canvas. In looking through these, I hope you will enjoy them. Now, this first painting is called Moonlight Dance. And I started it as a moon. And then I painted a live oak tree in front of it. In the live oak tree, I didn't want to have roots, so I put arms. And then I painted the frenzies, which are dancing under the moonlight and under the flowers. It was a fun painting to paint. The next painting. Don't ask. <laughs> Sometimes I just had to paint anatomical features, and in this one, fingers. Now, if you notice, the fingers that I painted are a little bit disarticulated and certainly don't match up. If you notice the hand on the right, the fingers that are sticking up are backwards. The hand at the bottom, same thing. And in most of these cases, uh, things just are a little bit off. So. That's one of my larger paintings, 30 by 40 inches. This painting's called The Hook. And The Hook was one of my uh, first times that I wanted to paint eyes, so I drew eyes. And then I decided to paint them. And once I had those, I had to decide what to do in the background. So I took a photograph I had taken of uh, Notre Dame before it burned down. And if you look in the background, that's what Notre Dame would look like from the inside. So, and then of course I had to paint hands and then the red balloons and the red balloons symbolize dreams yet to be fulfilled and the fragility of life. The 
This next painting is called The Sadness. And the sadness, again, is a large painting. If you notice in the background, the burning city, the lava coming down the hill, and all the people, which are basically egg hands in blue, coming down to escape. The figure in the top left has a tear in his eye. And hopefully the only thing it can save is the angels coming down. I really want you to notice in this painting, uh, the hair on that figure was done with one of the things that I use, with 22 gauge needles uh, with the tips broken off in a syringe. And then I take various colors and use that to paint the hair. Here we have global warming. And in this painting, she's looking out to a desolate, dry landscape with ghosts going up into infinity, the red sun and the blue. If you notice, she's also in one of the blue encasings or homes. The only thing that is preventing her from being in this desolate environment is the pitcher plants and the green vines. And in this painting also, the hair is done in that same way with the 22 gauge needle and syringe. I decided that I wanted to paint some hands, so I started doing hands. And then I went with other things in the painting, and this is what developed. Flower of hands is just a juxtaposition of man and nature. And those are blue-footed boobies, if anyone's interested, from the Galapagos Islands. Now, my next painting is called Pitcher Plants. And in case you haven't noticed, that's one of the themes in a lot of my paintings. I have a, a pretty nice carnivorous plant collection. And if you notice in the background, pitcher plants, and not just on my painting, the pitcher plants also, with a city in the background. My next group of paintings, again, is from my carnivorous plant collection. This one's called sundews. And if you notice in the foreground, those little plants that are sticking up are called sundews. Here, under the tree, we have pitcher plants with the flowers. And in this last painting, you'll see the bottom, the red, Venus fly traps. This painting is Our Lady of the Angels Monastery. And it was painted for my wife, actually. And that is something that uh, she really had a, a desire for me to do for her. So I did. Uh, our Lady of the Angels Monastery is a group of nuns that uh, support themselves by making cheese in Crozet, Virginia. So whenever we get up that way, we go and buy cheese from them. This painting is called The Prison. And again, in this painting, you see the bars keeping me keeping a person from going through, but then it's a desolate environment beyond that with the red sun and the black trees in the background. This next painting uh, <laughs> is called No Escape. And it started out with a brown figure facing the right, and then I decided, well, let me put a hand in. And of course, with the hand, you got to attach a foot. But with the foot, then I said, well, let me paint some great blue herons. And that made the face on the left. And then the great blue heron on the right made the face on the right. And 
That's how that painting develops. No escape. Now, this next group of, of paintings or drawings I did with pencil and then acrylic accents. Um, there is some surrealism, industrial surrealism components in this, but um, a lot of it is just drawings that I did. Um, and I hope you enjoy them as much as I did drawing them. This first drawing is called A Sense of Smell. So I was doing the six senses and the eyes you've seen already. Here's the nose. Um, and of course we have pitcher plant flowers in there. Uh, you have a little bit of an industrial component with the pipes in the background of the city. The next one in this series is called The Sound of Silence. Sound of silence, you, you see again, pitcher plants with the faces, the flowers with the faces. Um, and then um, the crashing down of the blocks into the city. This uh, picture actually was selected in an international drawing competition uh, put on by the University of Indiana Museum of Contemporary Art. And with over 800 pieces and over 300 artists, 38 pieces were selected uh, for this contemporary drawing exhibition, and mine was included. Keg Party. This one should be kind of self-explanatory. Uh, we have a keg, and of course, we have people all wanting to drink. Uh, my frenzies, which you saw in one of the previous paintings, uh, are drawn here. And Hopefully, people can relate to Keg Party. The last of these drawings is the Brock Center. And if you've ever been to the Brock Environmental Center in your walkway, you would have noticed before last year that you walked under this wooden archway that was made by an artist. I'm not sure what his name was. Um, in the center, you'll see the Brock Environmental Center with the air turbine. Um, unfortunately, somebody burned the archway, and uh, the people who worked there were pretty sad about that. So I uh, donated this picture to them and hopefully cheered them up a little bit. Well, that concludes most of my art. Again, here, website is www dot francoisart.com. All of this information, my uh, email address, my phone number is on there, as well as my painting and uh, prices, et cetera. Thanks very much. Uh, your artwork is very creative and uh, diverse. You uh, obviously have a very fertile imagination <laughs> and, and the presentation it was fun and interesting so we really thank you i was wondering um if our creation was something that has always been with you were you drawing a lot in your youth or is this a a later development well rob um no i first time i picked up a paintbrush was in 2017 um I was doing other creative things before then, uh, playing keyboards, synthesizers in various bands and doing PowerPoint presentations to go behind uh, uh, stage when we, when we played, but I never had painted. But I was spending too much time on the computer, so I decided let me try something a little different and I went into um, Michael's with a 50% off coupon and bought their starter acrylic set and that's what started me well great and you have uh, really taken off you have really flourished there so that's uh, impressive and actually inspiring you can take up artwork at uh, any time in your life that's great 
Uh, I was also wondering, uh, you know, wonderful theme of industrial surrealism and whether that is something that also developed over time or if it was uh, there in the early stages of your painting? Well, it was in the early stages. And the reason I think that my art has progressed the way it has is because I found that the easiest thing to do was straight lines and curves uh, and that type of thing with using different forms. So uh, I would take pipes sometimes and use those as my, um, uh, uh, to paint from. And a lot of, if you noticed, uh, pyramids are straight lines and uh, gentrification of buildings, a lot of straight lines. So that's kind of where it came from. Okay, very good. Now, you've mentioned using some uh, unusual tools. I had mentioned in the intro the symbols, and you mentioned <laughs> needles uh, there. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if you could tell us some other unusual tools uh, that you've used. Well, yeah. Um, I pretty much will use anything that I need. So I've taken... Uh, dinner plates and spoons out of the kitchen. I've taken, uh, again, my syringes with the uh, 22 or sometimes 25, 20 gauge needles, depends on what I want to do and how thick I need the uh, ribbons. Uh, the symbol from my uh, drum kit. <laughs> I've used T-squares, a lot of architectural type of things, French curves. Um, and that's why you see what you see. Now, these days I'm actually doing a lot of freeform, more freeform art than I did in the past. So, uh, okay. And do you have the idea uh, when you do use these unusual tools? Do you have the idea and look for the proper or the uh, an appropriate tool, or do you sometimes see a tool and think, "I wonder how I can use that"? No, I always have an idea that I need to do, and I'd look for something to help me do it. Okay, very good. Uh, I was wondering if there are any artists, um, either in the present or the past, that um, have inspired you, or would you say your work is so distinctive that uh, you, know, you may like artists but not really influenced by it? Well, I've tried to stay away from being influenced by artists, but my favorite artist is Salvador Dali. And you've probably noticed that. Maybe sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Very good. Uh, well, is there any advice you would give to aspiring artists? Again, you started uh, late in life, but do you have any um, advice for them? Well, if anybody's going to start painting, they should paint what they feel for themselves and not for other people. Um, and that's what I've always done. Now, that may not be the best for trying to sell paintings, but it certainly is a lot more satisfying. And finally, um, when you start painting, always, failure is not an option. Do what you want and it will work out. Good advice, good advice. And and also there's integrity in, in that answer as well, not just selling for the marketplace up there. Uh, do you have any future plans or goals either for contest or where you want to go with your art or anything like that? Well, I'm continuing to send resumes to different uh, shows. Um, preferably museums and you saw there was a couple museums that picked up a few of my paintings it'd be nice to have a group of my paintings in, in a museum but that may be a little pie in the sky so we'll see we'll see what the future holds it's a great goal though very 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 good well again we thank you so much paul this was really really enjoyable and um a fun and interesting as i said so thanks all to uh, for joining us, and we will see you next month. 
Thank you for having me. Take care now.